Hey everyone, this is a tutorial for the CTF challenge hosted by Pranav a few weeks ago. A capture the flag competition, also known as a CTF, is a competition with challenges based on security concepts, which are to be completed within a certain time limit. Once the challenge is solved, the participants get a flag which indicates the completion of the challenge. Before you start this challenge, make sure you have the virtual machine file as well as a software like VirtualBox to install the VM on. The commands in this challenge apply to both macOS as well as other Linux distributions. There will also be links in the description to help understand the different concepts applied throughout this challenge. With that, let's get started. In the case of most CTFs, the machine is usually hosted online and the challenges are solved in by logging in remotely. In this case, however, we would first require to install the virtual machine on our system to be able to access it remotely. Hence, this is step zero, setting up the machine. After opening VirtualBox on your laptop, click on import and select the VM file from where it is stored on your system and click continue. After that, you may see the settings for the virtual machine. No changes in settings are required. Click on import and the virtual machine is installed on your system. You may want to go to the settings page after this to increase the screen size or to fix any errors that may show up when trying to start the machine. You may now finally click on start to start the machine. After starting the machine, a login prompt is displayed. To be able to access this machine, we need to know the username and password. In the actual CTF, there was also a website that was available for us to access through which we could find more clues for the username and password. Hence, we need to be able to access that as well. As we know, each machine that is connected to a network has an IP address. Hence, in order to access the website, we first need to know the IP address of this virtual machine. As we're going to solve the CTF by logging into the machine remotely, which is the next step, you can minimize these windows and open up a terminal window to execute the commands from. There is a tool called Nmap that can be used to help us find the IP address. Nmap provides a lot of features. There is a link in the description to understand Nmap in more detail. The one command we're going to use here is the following. Nmap, the name of the tool, hyphen SP to know which hosts are active on the network, and the IP address represents a range of private addresses which are assigned to machines on a local network. On executing the nmap command, you may see a list of hosts that are active. This number may vary for each person depending on the number of machines that are connected to the network. The list of IP addresses here may also differ from your list of IP addresses as it is different for every machine. To find out which of these is the IP address, copy the IP address and paste it in the address bar of your browser and the TechLab page should show up. Congratulations, you're now done with step zero Moving on to step one, logging into the system. As mentioned earlier, in order to be able to log into the system, you need to know its username and password. On the website, you first see its title along with three links. These links are to help you understand any concepts with Linux, the command line and Git that you may be unfamiliar with. One common trick that is used in CTFs is to see the HTML code or the source code of the website and hope that there are some clues available. To find out the source code, right click and click on inspect element to see the HTML code for the website. Be on the lookout for HTML comments, those that start with an exclamation mark followed by two hyphens, or in this case, the lines that are colored green. The first comment ends with the word TC. If you may have noticed, TC is also mentioned in the title, HW Tech Club by TC. As the word TC is being mentioned repeatedly, it is safe to assume that this is the username of the system. On scrolling below, we see another comment to find something on GitHub and a username is provided. GitHub, for those not familiar, is a platform that developers can use to host and maintain their code, one of the features being version control. Open a new tab on your browser and enter github.com slash the username and what you will see here is Pranav's GitHub page, where you can see some of the projects that he's worked on. 
click on repositories to view the list of all the projects. Here we see a repository called TC Stuff, which is a repository made for this challenge. In TC Stuff, we see some files and some text that mentions of there being potential passes or passwords. From there, we see a file called passes.txt, which has a list of words. One of these words is going to be the password for the system. Now you would try to take the username and enter each of these passwords manually to try and log into the system, hoping one of them works. This is what is known as a brute force attack. And there are tools that exist that help you do this process of brute forcing much more faster. One such tool that is used for cracking passwords is Hydra. A link on how to install Hydra is available in the description. Before using Hydra, I would recommend that you copy all of these passwords and save it in a text file on your computer for easy access. Now you can open a new terminal window to be able to use Hydra. I've also gone into full screen mode as this is the only interface we will use for the rest of the challenge. First, open the directory where the passwords file is saved. In my case, it is in a file called techlub within documents. To go to another directory, use the cd command which stands for change directory. I am currently in the home directory which is denoted by the dollar sign. From here, I type in cd documents, then cd techlub. To check whether the file is here, use the ls command to list the contents of a directory. And this shows that the passes.txt file is here. Hydra has a lot of features and so we need to know which commands to use. Most command line tools have a help page which describes their commands, which can be accessed using the flags hyphen h or double hyphen help. This is useful when using a new tool. Type in hydra hyphen h and you can see the text. Here are some examples that show the working and if you scroll up, you can see an explanation for each flag. The two flags we require are the ones highlighted here. We have one username, so the small letter L flag is used and we have a set of passwords for which the flag capital P is used along with the file with the passwords in it. This particular example is what the command looks like. Type in the command hydra, which is the name of the tool, hyphen L with the username which is tc, hyphen P with the password file which in this case is passes.txt along with the IP address you want to access. Since we're accessing the system remotely, the protocol used here is SSH or the secure shell, a secure way to access an unsecure network. Hence, we mention SSH before the IP address of the virtual machine. Click enter and as you can see, Hydra is successful in cracking the password, which is Beanie. Last thing to do for step one is to actually log into the system. Before that, you can type in clear to clean up the terminal window for better viewing. The format to log in is as follows. SSH, the username at the rate, the host name or the IP address. On pressing enter, you may get a prompt to add this address to your list of authorized hosts. Type yes and enter the password in the password prompt. The password is being typed in even though you can't see it. Press enter and you have successfully logged into the machine, which completes step one. Now comes step two, find the flag. The first thing to do once you log on to machine would be to look for any files in the current directory you are in, which is the home directory. Use the ls command to list out the files in a folder, as mentioned before. We see a file called user.txt. Use the cat command to read the contents of this file. It mentions can you find root, which means that we're supposed to get root access to the system in order to get the flag. We currently have user level access, which means that there are files we do not have access to. There is also a possibility that there are some files on the system which are accessible but hidden from a user. These files usually begin with a dot in the name. In some cases, these hidden files may be stored to provide more clues for the challenge. These files can be accessed using ls-a. The hyphen L mentioned here provides more details for the file, including who owns it, file permissions, file size, etc. A link explaining file permissions is available on the Tech Club site you saw earlier. We can see a file here called .hint.txt. The contents of this file mention weird SUID permissions. 
SCYD is a special file permission for executable files which enables other users to run the file with the permissions of the file owner. Instead of the normal X which represents execute permissions, you will see an S indicating special permission for the user. Since we are trying to get root access, we have to look for files which usually wouldn't have the SUID bit set to it, but they do and should be owned by the root so that the command is executed with root privileges. This is what is known as privilege escalation, which means to exploit a bug, which in this case is the weird SUID permissions, to gain elevated access to the system. The command used to search for files is called find. Permissions are represented numerically with a four digit number. All permissions with the SUID bit have the first digit as four. The command is as follows find slash indicating to look for the file in the entire file system hyphen perm hyphen 4000 indicating that the first bit is set to at least four irrespective of the values of the other bits in simpler terms files with permissions of 4000 and above hyphen exec is a flag that lets you execute any commands to the result in the find command ls hyphen l with the curly braces is to display a detailed list for each file found by the find command the items denoted by the curly braces the backslash semicolon is to end the command written after the exec flag from the list of files that are visible here most of these files would usually have an suid bit set to it however there is one file the find command which is weird as it wouldn't be assigned an SUID bit. Considering it has an execute command, we could execute essentially any command to get root access. In order to do this, first create a file with any name. This is done using the touch command. The following command executes within CTF a command called who am I, which displays the current user logged into the system. On typing this, root is displayed. This means that if we executed a shell through this command, we would get a shell with root access. This is to be done by typing sh after exec to open a shell which is root access, denoted by the hashtag symbol at the start. First of all, congrats for getting root access to the system. Now you can find the flag to end the challenge. You don't know the location to the flag, but it is definitely in a place that is only accessible by root. There are multiple ways to find this. One way I could think of is to use the find command to look for text files throughout the system owned by root. The first part of the find command stays the same. However, a different flag is used here called hyphen name. Star.text looks for all files that end with text. The asterisk being a character representing zero or more characters. Another thing I realized as I'm recording this is to add hyphen user root to specify that the file should be owned by root. There is a long list of files that are displayed. However, if you scroll up, you do see slash root slash flag dot text. That's it. That's the flag you've been looking for. Switch to the root directory and see what files are there here. View the flag file, which indicates that you've completed the challenge. Congratulations. This completes step two. You may think you're done, but there is one more step left. We did see a note.txt file earlier using ls. Open the file and you see mentions of a personal backdoor to look around a little and what looks like a long string of random text. Now we come to step three, creating an SSH backdoor. In a nutshell, setting a backdoor provides password free access to a remote host once you have logged in. This is possible using a feature called public key authentication. There is a link explaining this in the description. To create a backdoor, you are required to first generate an SSH key pair, then store the public key in a file called authorized keys on the host system. To generate an SSH key pair, first open a new tab on the terminal and then type in ssh hyphen keygen. Press enter as we do not want to change the location of the key. These are locations that are predetermined in the system. 
Entering a passphrase is optional. Only difference being that no passphrase will let you log into the system directly. Whereas adding a passphrase adds an extra layer of security as you are asked to type it in when trying to log in. In this case, I am not entering a passphrase and just pressing enter. This will generate the key and also tell you the location of the public and private keys. You can type cat as well as the location of the public key to view the contents of the key. The next part is to copy the key to the authorized keys folder of the remote system. While you could do this manually, there is a tool called ssh-copy-id to add the public key to the remote system. Type in ssh copy id, the username at the rate the host name, after which you will see some information confirming that the right key is being copied. Enter in the password and the key has been added to the file. You can confirm this by switching to the first terminal tab and typing in cat.ssh/authorized_keys. Here you will see that your public key has been added to the existing list. You will notice the difference when trying to log in again, where you will be able to log in without having to enter a password. There was a file called submit.txt that was noticeable when we looked for the text files earlier, which is also stored in the .ssh folder. On viewing this file, it mentions to push your public key on GitHub to the TC stuff repository, a name we've seen earlier in this challenge. Copy your public key from the authorized keys file, which will then be pushed to the repository. The remote host isn't going to be used any further, so type in exit twice, once to exit the root shell and the second time to close the connection. In the context of GitHub, pushing the public key simply means to add your public key to the repository. To be able to do this, make sure you have a GitHub account and you're logged in. Then go to the TC stuff repository. Click on the fork button, which creates a copy of the repository for you to work on. Click on the public SSH keys file and click on the pencil icon to edit the file. Paste your public key and then add in your name. Scroll below to add in a commit message and click on commit changes. This adds the key to your document. However, this is your version of the document, but the change needs to be made on Pranav's version of the same repository. This can be done through a pull request. Click on code and then click on the pull request button next to compare. This shows you the differences between the two documents. From here, click on create pull request and add in a message for the pull request. Click on create pull request again and you're done. From here, Prana will receive a notification and will accept your pull request, after which the change will appear on his version of the document. This completes the final step of the challenge. Congratulations on completing the challenge. I hope you learned something from this. I sure did. Take your time to go over this tutorial and be sure to check the links on the website as well as in the description to know more about the concepts. Enjoy.